Right then. Hi there, good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us for this morning's webinar where we're looking at exporting data. As you know, my name is Adam and I'm part of the Metaphorix account management team. I'm joined here this morning by Rob Swift, who's one of our consultants, and Rob's going to be taking you through this morning's demo and presentation. I'll pass over in just a second and he'll take you through what we're going to be covering today. In order to save time as per usual, I'll put my contact details on the screen at the end of the session, so please feel free to contact me with any questions you have uh, about the areas that we look at today. Uh, just to let you know, today's session is being recorded and will, will be available to view online in the very near future. Uh, so all in all, the session should be around 30 minutes. So if you're ready, Rob, I'll hand over to yes, you yeah, and uh, yeah. we'll get going. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Rob, as uh, Adam alluded to earlier, and just to iterate his comments, uh, welcome to this webinar um, covering data exports in uh, Microsoft Dynamics NAV, or NAV, uh, using XML ports, OData, and NavLinks. Um, in terms of an agenda, um, I will look to give you a brief introduction to exporting data in an NAV or NAVision. Um, as well as a brief overview of the three methods uh, which we are covered, which we are covering today, um, which are available to export data, uh, including a brief demonstration of each. The three methods we will look to cover are two standard uh, NAV methods or revision methods of XML ports and OData or Open Data Protocol to give it its full name, and a third-party solution um, offered by Metaphorix called NavLink. Um, in terms of an introduction, um, um, the ability to manipulate data outside of NAV has become more prominent with the release of later versions of NAV. Um, several methods for exporting data from NAV exist, be they standard, customized, or available through third-party solutions. The relevant method for exporting data will typically be dependent on the purpose of the export, be that a generic export of certain single table data for the ability to manipulate exported data outside NAV and then re-import it back into NAV when you've done the relevant manipulation. So the first method we will look at today is the standard um, revision method of XML port. So, what is XML? XML is an acronym um, for Extensible Markup Language. Its the key purpose is to store and transport data. As a language itself, it doesn't really do anything. Um, however, once transported, data in XML form can be extracted for use within other systems. And to that end, what are XML ports? XML ports are a type of object used in NAV to interact with data in XML form. They enable the manipulation of XML data by allowing for the importing of data into NAV received in an XML format, as well as exporting of such data from NAV in the XML format. XML ports are designed via NAV's object designer and are typically executed or are not in predominantly, or sorry, totally, executed via a page object in NAV's RTC using a logic called the XML port. So there's a brief overview and introduction. Um, however, uh, I'd like to give you a brief demonstration of the creation and processing of an XML port. So to do that, I'm just going to minimize my uh, PowerPoint presentation and come in to the vision. So if I, this is Division 2018, by the way, and I'm just going to open the object designer, which is connected to database linked to that uh, instance we've just seen there. Um, I have actually made some originals already, just to prove that this works. However, I will take you through each of the steps involved in creating um, the uh, XML port and the relevant additional objects and functionality. Um, so the first step is to create a XML port. So to do so, here I am in the object designer. I've chosen XML ports. And if I go click on the new icon here, <clears throat> um, this brings up the XML port design window. So um, to build uh, the example I'm going to do today, um, I start off by creating a node, um, for example, root. 
Um, this is uh, of no type um, element and source type text. And by default, it creates a default data source of root. Um, and the next element or node we will create is um, a link to the customer table. So uh, I give it a, a useful name, i.e. customer. In this case, if this, the element remains, sorry, the node type remains element, but the source type is table. And in the data source, I then have to define uh, the division table that I wish to reference. In this case, it's the customer table, which is which table 18. And um, because the customer table in this case is actually an element of the root element, I have to indent it to do so. I use this icon here with the right hand arrow. Or alternatively, as the tooltip text suggests there, you can use shift, alt, and right on your keyboard if you prefer. So there is my customer element. The next element is to retrieve the relevant fields and the field data from the customer table that I wish to export via an XML port. To do so, um, what I do is very similar to the ones above it. Um, I give the first um, field, which is customer number. I give that a unique and meaningful, preferably shorthand node name. Um, the element, so the node type stays as element, but the source type in this case is field. And I then tell it which fields from the customer table I wish to extract the data for. And you can see here it brings up this field lookup window. And uh, down the left hand side, you have the tables which you defined in your XML port. In this case, there's only one. But as you'll see a bit later on, this will increase as we add more tables. And down the right hand side, you've got the fields within this table, which you can add uh, as a field source type to your XML port. In this case, I'm going to use the customer number or number field. And then I repeat these steps for the relevant additional fields. So in this case, I'm going to add customer name, change the source type to fields, bring up my lookup. Again, it's the customer table. And in this case, it's the name field I want to bring across. And then uh, the next field I need to add is the phone number for the customer steps for you, um, I'm sure you probably get the idea. If I choose customer, I choose phone number. And if I choose the next one, which is customer email, again, give it a meaningful but short, preferably um, node name, change the source type to field, access my lookup, find field email. Um, if you don't know already, what you can do in this case is if you know the first letter of the Field, um, rather than scrolling down the list, you can type it on your keyboard and it will scroll it every, um, multiple times if, if needs be, and it will scroll through each of those fields that begin with that character. So in this case, I've pressed the letter E on my keyboard and it's come up in this case with email. And two more. So we have customer balance, LCY, or local currency. Field, the customer, and for the balance field. There we go, balance LCY. And the last one I wish to include is the customer balance due LCY. In fact, let's shorten that to customer balance due. Field source type, customer table, balance QLCY. There we go. So there are all the fields I wish to add for the customer. Um, however, in addition, um, say for example, I wanted to show the contact of this customer. So in the export, I produce it will show both the customer details and the contact. Um, for that customer, what I can do here is I can add a second table element. Um, to do so, I will uh, give it a meaningful name. Choose the source, change the source type even to table. And 
bring my lookup up to bring my list of tables and I'm looking for the contact table. Just done there, um, you can uh, enter it manually if you know it rather than having to scroll through that list. Uh, so that's now uh, added and it sits below the customer balance uh, due field because we're, in a minute we're going to link it to the customer table. So it's actually um, linked to that particular table. And um, just one field from the contact table in this example that I wish to add, which is the contact name. So I give it a uh, node name, change the source type to field. In this case, you can see in my field lookup, it's now given me a list of two tables. So I've changed the selected one to contact and choose the name field. I click OK and then that creates my field. Because this contact name is part of the contact table and not part of the customer table, I have to also increase the indent by one. So again, I click on my uh, right hand arrow here or shift alt and right on my keyboard. That will then indent it um, as so. Um, and one final table I wish to add in this example is the customer uh, ledger entry table. Um, to show the relevant ledger entries that are applicable to this this customer. So if I do customer or cust ledger entry, that's my node name, change that to table. Before I choose my table, if I just move the indent back one. Um, because although it's a separate table, it's still linked to um, the customer table. But So, there we go. And if I choose the table of customer ledger entry, which I've gone past it, there we go, customer ledger entry. And then just add a few fields um, to this particular table. So, in this case, it's entry posting date field. Choose my field lookup. Then again, just change this uh, table to customer entry. Choose the posting date field. OK. And if I just briefly add these additional fields in. Them, sorry, I think then a whole load uh, by selecting them and indenting them by clicking on the right arrow here. Um, now I've added all the tables and the fields you wish, um, but the last bit that we need to do is make a few changes to uh, so two steps. Sorry, make a few changes to the XML port designer, which is to give it a meaningful name or caption. So name field. Webinar. And because we are uh, exporting the data from the vision, I change the direction from the default of both to the option of export. Okay. And now we need to link the contact and customer ledger entry tables to the customer table. So to do so, we will um, choose the contact table or line here. Click on the properties icon and a bit further down here we will see the link table option. So here I'll choose customer and my link fields. The link field in this case will be the um, contact 
the number from the contact table and from the customer table it will be primary contact number field there we are click OK and now that's the link created between the contact and the customer table and then we do something similar for the customer ledger entry table um, scroll down the properties click on the link table okay the customer ledger entry for my tables list and against the link fields define the link between the two tables so the first link uh, value we're entering is on the customer ledger entry side so in this case we are looking for customer number and the reference field which is on the customer side which is on the customer ledger entry side apologies is the uh oops actually that's a slight mistake there bear with me Oh, no, that's right. I've chosen the wrong table. <laughs> Apologies for that. That should be customer. If I come into here, and then choose customer ledger, entries customer number field, and on the right hand side, uh, from the customer table, choose number. Click OK, that's the link created. Now, the uh, final step is to save this XML port. So I will set it, save it to the 50,000 range. I'm just going to use my PLC define name because uh, the name only allows a certain amount of characters. So I'll just save that. There we go. Apologies for that. I've got a slight indentation. The um, XML port uh, for the custom tables fields. Click OK. That's now ready to be used and referenced. You can change the version list if you require. The next phase in the setup of this is to define a code unit. So um, I produced one earlier just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, so in here, I've created a code unit again in the 50,000 range. Um, and I've created a function called export data. Uh, within that function, uh, I've created a number of variables and also the parameter of um, customer number. I'll just expand this so you can see it better. Um, so you see here my parameter, which I pass to this particular function from the customer card, in this case via an icon, is this uh, value of the customer number parameter. Um, I then create two variables, or local variables in this case, one for the customer record and one for my XML port that I've created earlier. Um, and the functionality behind it is as follows. Uh, I create a link to the customer table uh, and set range on the customer number field uh, based on the value of the parameter customer. No. If I find if it if now finds a record linked to that customer number that we've passed to it, it will then set the table view on the XML port to reference the customer record that's been found, and it will then run that XML port. Okay. And later that. And the last bit of setup I've done, uh, again just to show you very briefly, is on the customer cards um, page actions. I've created a new icon or page action under the actions group um, called export customer data. And this particular function, all it will do is it will call a code unit, which I've defined as a local variable called data export CU and 
connected to my code unit, which I briefly showed you earlier. It will call this code unit and call in particular the export data function, passing the customer number of the customer whose card is currently open for in view. So to demonstrate uh, the process end to end, if I come in to my now 2018 uh, client, uh, here I've got a, a filter set up just for ease, um, but I've filtered on this customer of accounting group PLC. If I edit that customer's record, um, see a number of different pieces of information uh, related to the client or customer, sorry. And to generate the XML port, I have clicked on the actions uh, ribbon up here, and you'll see my export customer data icon under the functions group. If I click on that, it will then bring up this filter window. Um, it's automatically picked up the filter against the customer number. So unless I want to add any more field filters, I don't have to do anything more. And if I click on OK, you will then get this export file window, which will uh, either give the option to open the XML file or save it. In this case, I will save it. I'll just save it to my desktop. If I return to my desktop, I should have a file. Okay, click save. Let's try this one. Come back into my desktop, and there is my file. If I go to open with and notepad, we will see, apologies, the <laughs> PowerPoint presentation has come up, we will see uh, an export of the XML uh, port and data within, including all the different customer ledger entries that are on the system for that particular customer account group. So, that's um, the XML port. The next um, uh, data output uh, export method is OData. <clears throat> so, what is OData? Um, OData is an acronym, as mentioned earlier, for the Open Data Protocol. It's designed to provide a standard method by which data can be queried by several applications, um, including Excel, for example, um, utilizes a URL or URI, which is defined via a web service in Navision once it's created. So yes, as I mentioned earlier, it utilizes a OData users that utilize the web service to allow the displaying and manipulation of nav data outside of nav itself as well as the possibility where applicable to update records within the division. To utilize OData connections in NAV users, create a NAV web service, um, which is, can be a link to a code unit page or query, um, as these are the objects that can be exposed by a web service. And once the web service is published, a URI or URL is provided to reference the objects, the objects are in external applications. So, uh, in terms of a demo, um, I want to create, uh, show you how to create a new OData web service in Navision, pointing to, in this case, the customer's uh, list page. Um, the use of Microsoft Excel's PAL pivot capability to manipulate an exposed nav data, and a brief um, overview of creating a pivot table using exposed data. Um, in this case, depicting customer balances grouped by salesperson. So to do so, I will come back into my division client that I was in earlier, click down the customer card. In this case, I've created a uh, save view for these purposes. And you'll see here already, um, there is a web service for the customer's uh, object, which is object 22. Uh, I've given it a brief name the service name of customers, and I have marked the published icon as published. Once that is marked, it generates the OData URL. So if I was to create one from scratch, all I would do is click on the new icon at the top. I would, in this case, I will go for the object type of page, but you have, as I said earlier, the code unit and query uh, options too. And 
if I choose a so page, so if I choose the customer card, for example, customer card, give it a meaningful service name and publish the um, web service. If I then just move away from that particular new record that I've created, you'll see that now it will then generate an OData URL for me to use. It's quite long, but I just expand um, the uh, OData URL column. You'll see here it generates it based on your connection and at the end it appends your service name which it will use to reference um, this particular page within the vision. So if I return to the one I created earlier, which is this one here, um, this has now been exposed. So what I'll do is if I copy um, the value of the OData URL column uh, for use in a minute, uh, I then will open an Excel workbook. Um, and if you have it enabled with an Excel, you can see that's just minimize it. You should have this power pivot uh, ribbon or tab shown. If you don't, what you can do is if you go to file, you go to options, you go to add-ins, Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, you'll see this manage uh, field here. Just change the value if it's defined as something else, in this case, Excel add-ins to com add-ins. Click on the go icon and uh, you can um, add the relevant um, tab, in this case, the Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel by checking the checkbox here. You can see I've already done it in this case. Once you can see the Power Pivot, um, tab or ribbon, you just open it up and click on the manage icon up here. And click on to generate the data source, click on the option from data service and choose the sub option of from OData data feed. Now, uh, with the URL we, we copy from the OData URL um, column in the web service on nav, um, you can just paste that into this data feed URL field. Give your data field, a data connection a friendly name. So, data. as an example, click next. This will then try and uh, reference that OData connection and try and make a connection to it. If it has, you should see this. Uh, URL window here. Just ensure that against the customers in this case, the, re the relevant checkbox is checked, which in this case it is. If I click finish, it will then import that data. And you can see here it successfully imported 68 rows of data from the customers. If I click close, um, you can manipulate the data if you wish, but in this case, I'm just going to close. Um, that window down, and then I'm just going to briefly show you how to build a power pivot table. Pivot table, I'm sorry. So, what I'm doing here is I'm clicking on the insert uh, ribbon uh, or tab, uh, clicking on the pivot table icon, and leaving the options as they are defined in a blank. So, you've got oh, sorry, set as they are, sorry. Um, so, you've got use this workbook's data model. Uh, defined and also the existing worksheet option um, for where you want to place the pivot table. If I click OK, um, you get this little window in columns A, B, and C, um, down to row 18 in this case, and to the right you'll see this power pivot field icon, um, or, or um, section I should say. Um, you'll see here also you've got your customers data table. If I expand this, uh, you'll see all the fields um, that are from this table. So I'm just going to briefly build a quick power pivot, pivot table, sorry. Um, if I drag the location code, place that in the rows column. And customer balance. Again, if you can't see it or wish to save a bit of time, you can use the search feature here. So customer balance in the values and the name field as well, or in this case, define it as a row. 
And you can see here it's built a very simple um, pivot table um, split by location code. Um, uh, and if you wish to, you can add salesperson code as well if you wish to define it by salesperson code. Um, in the example here, um, you'll see there's a few that haven't got a location code defined against it. So in this case, what we can do is just for um, reference purposes, we can add a very label, say that like something like no location, for example. And there you have um, a simple but brief uh, um, demonstration of using an OData connection to build, in this case, a pivot table in Excel. Okay, so I go back to my presentation. Um, there's just the steps for which I've just gone through. And the third um, option for data exports I'd like to cover is Navlink. Now, Navlink is a third party solution provided by Metaphorix. Um, although not entirely, its um, main, main goal or main purpose is for a data management, data manipulation solution encompassing several features. Um, it allows NAV users to manage the importing and exporting of data via Navision, including uh, EDI, for those who are interested. Um, data can be exported in several formats, including Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, PDF, XML, HTML, or CSV, comma separate values. Okay. So uh, that's just a brief introduction uh, to Navlink, but uh, what I'd like to do now is give you um, a demonstration of outputting data or exporting uh, data from an uh, Innovision instance using Navlink. So in this case, it's, I've got a Nav 2017 instance here. Um, and what I've done is I've come from my departments window what I was trying to show you um, was that Navlink has its own um, department when it's installed and set up in your Navision instance. And there are two kind of sub menus, I guess you call them uh, one of profiles and one of setup. The one we're interested in today is the profiles option. So Navlink uh, operates uh, typically through a number of different pro um, profiles, um, and this is in terms of how the data is processed, manipulated. So you have import profiles for importing data, and you have execution profiles for executing the running of the profiles, be that import, export, etc. And also output profiles for outputting uh, the data too. In this case, uh, today we're going to concentrate on output profiles. Uh, and to that end, what I have done is um, I have created an example profile. So if I come back into output, and I scroll down to the bottom. Uh, this is our test environment uh, for Navlink. So I'm just going to scroll to the bottom to find the one I've created earlier. So this is uh, an example of one I've created for today's webinar um, called Metaflux Webinar Export. Um, however, I'll show you how to create this particular example um, from scratch. To do so, um, all I do is click on the quick build from a table icon up here. I then instruct uh, Nav or Navlink uh, how I'd like the data to be outputted or what I'd like the data to be outputted to in terms of a layout. So in this case, I'm going to choose list of PDF. Uh, this, the next stage is it will build a list of the tables uh, within my Navision instance that I can um, use to, for the data that I wish to output. In this case, I'm going to use the customer table. Uh, Navlink from a table list point of view also has a quick filter so rather than having to scroll down um, all the list of tables you can actually search for the table you wish to use. In this case I'm going to use a customer. Um, it's a slightly different colour because it's marked as a favourite if for example you use multiple tables uh, quite often when you're building such outputs. Navlink includes the possibility to uh, mark tables as favourites. Uh, when I'm happy with my table selection, I click OK. The next stage will be to uh, select the fields from um, the customer table that I wish to output to PDF. Uh, and here is a list of fields that's found within the customer table. Again, uh, these are 
slightly coloured differently, or the ones that slightly coloured differently are due to them being marked as favourites, um, because um, people use these fields uh, quite often for all the if I wish to add a field, all I do is this uh, column here called selected as well. Um, against the relevant fields, if I just ch check this checkbox, so in this case, um, I'm going to be choosing the number field, the name field, the phone number field, a bit further down. Oops, let's check my name selection, phone number, and emails. So email is a bit further down. So what again? Sim what I can do again, similar to the table list, if I can search for the relevant field. In this case, it's email. If I just click select. Now I've got this um, option window here that's popped up, um, asking me whether within the export I would like to show have the email shown with a hyperlink. Um, so, for example, you wanted to send an email direct to that particular contact or email address and um, you can do that from within the output. In this case I'm going to click no. Um, now it's obviously turned a different colour again. Uh, this is to indicate that it's been selected. Um, if I then clear quick filter it will then return me to my full list. And um, there's a nice little feature here that will allow me, I'll just expand this window, that will allow me to uh, review which fields I've chosen so I know I'll check them all before I continue to the next stage. And that's why this review icon up here. So you'll see so far I've got the number, the name, the phone number and the email the field. And then if I want to return to the full list, I just click on this tree view icon here. Um, now, uh, one additional field I wanted to bring through uh, to my export was the balance field. To add the balance field, I have to use uh, another feature within the Navlink field selection window, which we're in here. And that is the add sum field or sum field um, function. So if I click on the add sum field, again, it will bring up uh, another option window. Um, with the sum fields, you can actually save uh, previous ones you've built in the past um, to as a template. So rather than having to create them afresh every time, you can uh, use a pre-existing sum field template. In this case, I'm going to choose no. Um, and, in the, and so it'll bring up this uh, window here called add some field to customer table. So the table I'm interested in is the detailed customer ledger entry. So if I just find or locate that table, again, it's marked as a favorite in this case. But if I just click OK, uh, that will define the table that I wish to add the sum field from. And the field I'm interested in is the amount field. Uh, Again, it is down here, but I could search for it if I wished. If I click on amount and the field description, rather than amount, I want it to define the value of balance. And similarly, my caption, which has changed automatically to balance as well. Um, I'll leave the other options uh, as they are for now. I won't go through them because um, some of them are quite detailed. Um, however, uh, the relevant setup that's here is fine for all the purposes we need to do. Click OK. Um, I then get another option window to say, OK, so if, if, our, if the balance is returned as zero, do I still want to show the customer record? Um, in this place, I'm going to click yes to say that if it is zero, then I don't want it to show the customer record. And you'll see at the bottom, it's added my sum field and if I go to review, it appears as one of the fields that are selected. Okay. So once I'm happy with the fields I have got, I click on OK. The next stage is to give the uh, profile um, a meaningful name. Um, when you're building out the profiles, it also in the background builds a data profile, which is the link to the relevant database. Um, given the fields that you have chosen. Um, so it also asks you to give that a name as well. Typically, I give them both the same name. Um, so when I come to look at the that uh, data profile, which it creates, as well as the output profile at the same time, I know which data profile I'm looking for in re relevance to a um, output profile in this case. And uh, on purpose, I'm choosing the same name as this. Um, but what will happen is when, it, when it's processed or created the output profile, 
because I've got one with the same name already, it will um, append um, an incremental number, so in this case, two at the end, so it makes it unique in both the case of the data profile and the output profile. But if I click OK, the next window, uh, next option um, is a bit more complex in regards to the functionality that Navlink has in addition to what we're demoing today. But um, in this case, I'll just leave the option for data selection mode as SQL. And then the following few option fields are mainly around setup, so aesthetics um, to how the data uh, will be displayed in the PDF output. So in this case, it allows me to choose from a number of predefined base fonts. In this case, I'll leave Calibri 10 points selected. Um, the next is asking me whether before I process the output profile, which I'll do in a minute, um, whether I wish to be able to define filters against my customer data in this case. In this uh, example, I will click yes. Um, the next one, open file, um, is, is basically asking me what I would like to do when the file, or in PDF file in this case, is generated. Do I wish to have it open straight away? Do not open, but save a copy prompt me to open it before it's opened or send it as an email. Uh, because Navlink has a functionality to allow you to send any outputs generated by email as well. It's one little additional feature. In this case, I'm just going to leave the default of open file selected and click OK. Um, and the next one, Stripe alternate rows. This is kind of an aesthetics one. And basically what this will do is if I was to respond yes to this message, for every other row shown in the output, it will um, colour the row to uh, a, a readable colour but uh, to, make, to make it stand out a bit more. Um, I'll just click yes in this case. So as I said before, that's the last um, little step in the wizard, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, and because I've got uh, one already defined as metaphoric webinar export, it's created the same one. but. Same description, sorry, but with uh, the number two appended to it. Okay, um, so now that's great. Generated uh, the output profile. I'm now in a position to be able to process the output profile. There are several methods for outputting uh, such profiles, but in this case, I'm just going to process it directly from my list of output profiles. And to do so, I click on the process icon. And um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, one of the steps during the wizard um, is uh, we asked you whether you wanted to be able to define um, filters, and I responded yes to that option. So now I'm processing um, the out profile. This Navlink process request window has appeared. Um, and to define the relevant filters, in this case, the number fields, um, by default, uh, Navlink will include, um, for those of you familiar with them, the primary keys or the unique uh, references to a record in Nav. In this case, for customers, it's the number field. So to define a filter, I click on the drop down arrow. Um, and this brings back a fairly large window with a number of different functions. Again, I won't cover all these off today during today's session. However, um, the uh, rest of the page that appears uh, includes a number of different filter options. So filtering via city, via address, and via either the uh, customer, in this case, is code or name value. Um, however, um, for the purposes of today, I'm just going to select one manually, in this case, the customer group, and just choose the option of select and close, or the icon, select and close. That will then define my value. Um, this, if you're interested, the save description field here. If you run in this pro profile multiple times and you want to use the same filters each time, Navlink includes the functionality to save your filter selections um, just by giving it a meaningful description, clicking on the item icon save. I won't do that today, but it's just another feature that Navlink offers. Uh, once I'm happy with my filters, I click on submit. This will then go away and process the output profile. You can see it's fairly quick, but depending on the amount of data, can can determine the time it'll take. And in this case, um, as a Windows default, it's asking me do I want to open this uh, PDF, which is generated. If I click yes, you can see here it's generated my PDF with the relevant values, including the balance, which we uh, built using the sum field option. Um, and so yeah, that's. Uh, 
just a brief overview of outputting data from NAV using a third party solution we offer called NavLink. So if I return back to my slides, again, that's just the next slide, it's just the steps I've covered off. Uh, in summary, um, so today I've given you a brief introduction to uh, three mainly methods, uh, main methods for outputting data in NAV, two being standard in XML ports and OData, and the third being um, uh, NavLink, which is a third party solution. Okay, and that's all for me. I'll hand back to Adam now. Cheers, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you all found that interesting and useful. Uh, if you have any questions, please take note of my contact details on the screen now. Uh, give me a call or drop me an email and I'll be happy to help you out. Uh, keep an eye out for uh, the recording of this webinar, which is going to be on our website very soon, so do feel free to re-watch and share. Also, don't forget that our next webinar is on the 12th of June and we're going to be looking at Dynamics 365 for sales, formerly known as Dynamics CRM, so that'll be a good one. Check out our website for that for uh, more details. Finally, thanks again for your time this morning, and we'll see you again in a few weeks. Cheers.